Hey everybody, it's Tom. In this video I want to share with you a technology tool that we can use to create things to help us out in our classrooms. What I'm talking about is a 3D printer. 3D printing technology has been around for a long time, but it's becoming more and more accessible and it's getting very easy to use. So in the example we're going to talk about today, it was actually inspired by Kathy Dibble at Franklin School. She was showing me a plate tectonics lesson that she was working with with the students. The students would cut out little pieces of paper that represented the plates and they would have to use their reasoning skills to figure out how these went together uh, and see how plate movement over time has changed. And so Kathy and I were talking about it and we realized that this lesson could be helped out if we had some more durable manipulatives. I thought I told her, I said, hey, this is a great application for a laser cutter. We could go ahead and cut some pieces out of wood, and bingo, we would go ahead and have a very nice, uh, essentially a puzzle for the students to work with. It would be durable. She could put it away, use it year after year after year. Well, we don't have a laser cutter, but we do have a 3D printer. So uh, long story short, what I want to show you today is how I came up with making some little plate tectonic puzzle pieces. This is, uh, this is North America. And there are lots of other applications for this. Um, there are, you know, you're basically only limited by your imagination. Some of the other things that we're doing is, uh, this is, says WHS Science, but this is actually uh, uh, for attaching a cell phone to a microscope. Uh, in biology classes, students are, are going ahead and you know, looking at things under the microscope and their teachers are having them take cell phone pictures that they can print out and annotate later and it's really it's really enriching the activity. One of the difficulties the students were having were, were holding the cell phone steady enough and still enough to get a good image. So uh, we went ahead and thought about it and, and made up some some different holders that are, are really working out pretty well. So the purpose of this is to just show you what we're doing Maybe it's going to be inspirational. Maybe you'll think of an application that you could, uh, you know, find a place where 3D printing could, could help out your instruction. Um, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but hey, we're here to help. Like I said, this is just inspirational. So uh, let's, take, let's take a look at the basic process. So to get started, what we're going to do is find an image that we want to turn into a three-dimensional print. Now this was from the American Museum of Natural History. We could go and try and pull the image from their curriculum materials. In this case, it's in a PDF format. All the pictures are there, but because it's in a PDF format, we would have to take a screenshot to turn it into a, a picture. And that's easy to do, but it's easier to go to Google. And you can see somebody's already got it as a picture. So I just copy that picture, and I'm going to import it into a, a photo editing program. This one's called Inkscape. It's free. It's, it's relatively easy. And I'm not going to go into all the details here, but what I need to do is turn this into a scalable vector graphic, an SVG file. And the reason I have to do that is because that's what the program that I'll use to make the 3D printer file uh, needs in order to make it three-dimensional. So there are, lots of, there are lots of online tutorials about how to work with these programs. Uh, it's actually pretty easy. It may look intimidating, but it's not so bad. So once I have my SVG file, I'm going to go ahead and open it up in a, in a CAD program. This one's called Fusion 360. And what I'm doing in this CAD program is I'm turning a one-dimensional image into a... I'm, I'm trying, giving it some depth. So now it's three-dimensional. You can see that it's got... Um, you know the the plate but it's also got the the continent part I've, it's sort of got two layers to it what i'm doing next is i'm creating an stl file this is a file that the 3d printer software will use to essentially slice into a bunch of different layers that's how the 3d printer works it it, it makes uh, puts down a layer of plastic at a time, moves up, makes another layer of plastic until you have your three-dimensional object. So this is the software that actually does that slicing. I won't go into all the details about how you do this in the software, but I wanted to show you the different layers. So for this piece, there are 25 layers, and it shows you how the 3D printer will print each layer. So here's a time-lapse video of the 3D printer making the actual part, layer by layer. The way it works is much like a hot glue gun. 
it heats plastic up to almost its melting point, make it nice and soft, and then squirts it out through a nozzle into the shape that you created. After all the layers are done, the plastic cools off, and you have a nice solid part. So here I'm just going to show you how the puzzle goes together. And one thing I'd like to point out is I did not add something, everything that I could have to the, to the 3D printed files. Uh, the one thing that's missing that we'd want to add later is some more evidence that the students could use to come to conclusions about how these plates fit together. You see here I'm doing it with a Sharpie. And this comes right from the activity showing where fossils were found across different tectonic plates. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this small project on 3D printing. Hopefully it gave you something to think about and maybe it was inspirational in some way. If you have a project that you'd like to work on, shoot me an email and I can hopefully point you in the right direction to make it a reality. Take care. See you next time.